sorry I was late for Mass tonight. I spent the afternoon with my family. Uh, my brother-in-law, Tom Conway, died on Tuesday, and we met this afternoon to plan his funeral. And then I had to go to the wake across the street for uh, Ron Steele, Joanne's brother-in-law, uh, who passed away, and his funeral is here tomorrow morning. Tom's funeral will be on Saturday. As many of you know, when there's a death in your family, it, everything seems to stop. And for myself, I'd like to just stop with them all, but I can't, so I have to, have to keep going, but it's, it's difficult. Our faith tells us that those we love that have died and have been led very good lives, like my brother-in-law certainly did, um, but they're in heaven at peace, no more suffering or sickness. And that's consoling, but because we're human, the separation is what hurts, that suddenly we're separated, and, and that's what hurts. But in faith, we know that he's looking down from heaven now. I chose the gospel for his funeral about Jesus saying, whoever eats the Eucharist will live forever. And my brother-in-law believed that absolutely. He was a Cleveland policeman, and so he had to work different shifts very often. And he had memorized the mass schedules on the weekends of every Catholic church on the west side of Cleveland, so that whatever time of the day it was, he'd be sure that he would never miss mass. And that was one of the crosses he was bearing this last several months when he's been ill, that he couldn't come to mass was the biggest thing that bothered him. And so I think today, you know, he's with Jesus saying, you ate my flesh and drank my blood. Welcome into my kingdom. So I just share those thoughts with you. And on the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, St. Helena, St. Helen, um, in the beginning of the fourth century, went in search of the true cross of Christ. Um, she went to Jerusalem to find it. And what had happened was the emperor at the time built a pagan temple right over the spot where Christ died. And her son, she was the mother of Constantine. And Constantine was a very devout Christian. And he um, went and with her, they tore down that temple. And then he built the, the temple of the Holy Sepulchre, which is there to this day, um, in which is the, the Calvary, the place where Jesus died, and also the place where the empty tomb is. And they had such great devotion that people, early Christians, were not allowed to really use the cross as a symbol because the Romans regarded it only as a, a thing of torture and they despised the Christians. They nailed to the cross many people um, who would not give, who would not uh, worship the pagan gods. And so they would use different symbols like the fish or the anchor, those kinds of things. But after Constantine made his edict of toleration, then people were able to publicly display crucifixes and crosses. The people found it strange who were not Christian because on the outskirts of the cities of Rome, there were tons of crosses with the decaying bodies of criminals that were crucified there. And it was a reminder to people that if you don't give obedience to Rome, that's going to be your fate. And so it was a tough symbol for people. Through the centuries, um, the, the cross has been made into beautiful jewelry and beautiful crosses and so forth. But it was the bloody sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that saved us. And we still have the cross as the crucifix with his body on it because we must never forget the sacrifice Jesus made to save us. The cross for many is a symbol of death, but it's not death, it's life. It's a symbol of darkness and gloom for some, but for us it's a symbol of light. It's a symbol of loss for us, but it is really a symbol of paradise for us. We, we lost our relationship with God with, on a tree, with Adam and Eve, and our life was restored with Christ who died on a tree to bring us eternal life. So when we talk about the exaltation of the Holy Cross, 
It's not that we are enthralled with the torture of Jesus, we're enthralled with the love of Jesus, that he would go to that extent to give his life for us, so much did he love us. And so we must never forget. And today the cross stands for us. In the opening hymn, the one line, the second verse struck me where it says that to the newborn, meaning the new, newly baptized, um, there's joy because they have, their brow has been sealed with the sign of the cross. When I baptize a baby, I make the sign of the cross on their forehead, claiming them for Jesus Christ. And that's a great gift because they're sealed with the Lord himself. So today we, we're celebrating the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross because we're, it is the symbol of our salvation, a symbol of the depth of God's love for us, and it is the promise of eternal life for us because Jesus, after he died on that cross, rose from the dead and promised that he was going to prepare a place in heaven for us too. All we need to do is follow him, carrying the crosses that we bear all the time carrying those crosses like Jesus carried his, and we'll find ourselves in the kingdom of Jesus. Let us stand and offer our prayers and our petitions.